Pastor Russ here with a special edition of Hope for Today. In light of what happened yesterday in Washington, D.C., I want to remind you of four things. The first one is that violence against our capital and electoral process must be condemned. Violence is not the answer. The psalmist said in Psalm 11:5 that God hates the wicked and the one who loves violence. The wisdom writer in Proverbs 3, 31 tells us this, that we are not to envy violent people or copy their ways. The second reminder is that the election concerns must be handled through due process. Again, violence is not the answer. It is not the way. In our government system, we have due processes in place to handle these issues. They've been followed, and whether we agree or like the results, we need to accept them and we need to move on. A third reminder is that this attack will have long-term consequences for our nation, not only internally, but around the world. Scripture teaches us in 1 John 3, 4, that sin is lawlessness. We're warned in Romans 6, 23 to be reminded that the wages of sin is death. Perhaps you've heard this saying before, is true. Sin always takes you further than you want it to go. It keeps you longer than you wanted to stay, and it costs you more than you wanted to pay. Again, it is certainly true. The enemies of our country will and are using what happened yesterday against us and against democracy. A fourth and final reminder, perhaps the most important, in fact, not even a perhaps, the most important thing is this, that we need to remember that our God can use this tragedy to bring good and as a turning point for our nation. And that's exactly what we need to pray would happen. Some very specific things we can pray. We need to pray for our leaders and for all people to seek reconciliation and peace. This is an event that one can be a turning point in which we either move forward or we move backward as a nation. In Ephesians 4.15, the great missionary Paul reminds us that we're to be kind, tender-hearted, and forgiving just as Christ has forgiven us. A second group that we need to pray for, we need to pray for Christians, all Christians, that we would respond with grace and truth. Again, Paul reminds us that we are to speak the truth, but we are to speak the truth in love. Peter reminds us in 1 Peter 2, 1, that slander is sin. We definitely, at a time like this, with heightened emotions, need to be very careful of the words that we use. And then the third thing that we need to pray for is that more Christians would be involved in society at all levels. We are literally called to be the presence, the tangible presence, the hands and feet of Jesus Christ in our society. We need to remember that we are to point people to the one person who can heal us, unite us, and redeem us. I want to close with a word of prayer. Father, we come to you today and we ask, especially during this incredibly difficult time, that God, you give our leaders, we pray especially for President Trump, for President-elect Biden, we pray that you would give them understanding, that you would give them compassion, and that you would give them wisdom. And we ask God that they, along with every other leader at every level, would lead us to reconciliation and peace. And Father, we pray that as your followers, that we would respond to this with grace and truth, and in loving actions that would lead to peace as well. Remind us, Father, that slander is sin. Help us to watch the words that come into our mouth. Help them to bring healing and not to bring division. And we ask that you help us, again, as your followers, to be involved in our society, not only in our own community, but even beyond, that we would be the tangible presence of Jesus Christ pointing others to you. And we claim your promise that you will, and you, not only that you can, but you will use what has happened to bring good from it. But remind us, Father, you gave us that problem with the condition that we love you and we follow you. So we ask, especially as your followers, your servants, we would not only express our love to you, but that we indeed would be truly following after you. Use us in any way you can in this process to bring good and to use this to have more people come into a relationship with you that would change their life forever and all eternity, as only you can do. We ask this in your name, Jesus. Amen.